swine it. It's time for a new era of communication in the swine industry. One that you can get the latest updates while you're commuting or driving to farms. Here you have the brightest minds of the global swine industry in your pocket. We need to improve our productivity by using data. Data is number one issue. If you don't have the data in front, it's going to be very difficult for someone to come in and try to get it right. Welcome to Swine Eat Podcast. My name is Marcel Gonçalves, your host for today's episode. Swine Eat Podcast is only possible with the support of forward-looking and innovative companies like Gestalt, always one step ahead in swine feeding, Every Pig, a simple yet powerful pig health and production management tool, NutriQuest, experts serving producers delivering breakthrough solutions, and Zimpro, essential trace minerals, exceptional performance. This episode's sponsor highlight is NutriQuest. NutriQuest delivers targeted breakthrough solutions to animal producers via nutritional and non-nutritional products, services and technologies. At NutriQuest, we believe in ingenuity inspired by servitude and that our success comes from helping producers realize improved profitability through optimized technologies and efficient operation. Hello everyone, today's episode is about a lifelong of swine production in 30 minutes with uh, Dr. Gonzalo Castro. Um, how are you today, Dr. Gonzalo? Yes, we're doing well. I'm glad to hear. Thanks for joining us today. And um, first question I have is, Dr. Gonzalo, if you can just uh, give us a brief summary of your great and long career. Okay, well, let me tell you, Marshall, this has been a tremendous opportunity to go back in, in what Winston Churchill has said. You know, if you don't know history, you don't know the future. Right. Okay? Right. So the history is very simple. The first time I met uh, pigs in my life was 1954. I was 14 in a farm with 100 sows, you know, and I, get, I got very excited about it. And from there, I'm still sitting here with the pigs, okay? Right. And um, Chile was nothing on pigs, and then uh, I had the opportunity to do my animal science agronomist in Chile. Then um, I went to the U.S. for a master's degree in animal science in the University of Minnesota, and uh, then I finished my doctor's degree in 1965, 75, and I would like to tell you, you know, that when I arrived to the U.S., it was completely different from what you see today. I imagine. Main, okay, mainly no biosecurity, mm -hmm. none whatsoever, no showering. Uh, we could go to the farm, you know, be out of the farm, after the car, and with our shoes, getting in, in the barns, you know, and... Um, Genetics for purebreds, you know, the three typical three bread cross, and uh, nutrition was simple. And uh, it was very, very, very backwards in the sense of, not backwards in the, in the sense, it was historically what we had, mm -hmm. okay? Right. So it was, it was something that it, it's worth thinking how much we have done from those times, looking forward to being a, nutritionist in Minnesota. I had a second minor field, which is reproduction in the vet school. So I was excited with reproduction, you see, and uh, I was lucky, and I've been very lucky to meet people on my on my work. And uh, if I remember, you know, I had a, a professor in the vet school called Bob Grable from Sweden. He started uh, in the university with AI very, very long time ago. We used the rubber spider, you know, and we disseminate some of the south in the school in animal science. And I was very excited about what we can do, you know, with artificial insemination. And then going with, from there, you see, we start seeing, you know, genetic companies coming in 
to develop new frontiers in genetic improvement that we need to have. Uh, Maurice Bichard, who was the PhD geneticist from Edinburgh, went to, to the University of Minnesota and gave a talk about genetics using not a three-way cross, a F1, you know, and everyone was very, very excited about it. So I was lucky that as I went through my life, things started to change. So what I said to myself, you have to be aware that the things that are changing, you have to be on it, not behind. You have to be on it. So next, uh, I came back to Chile. There was no genetics, none. Uh, very few cells. See, and I think with being a nutritionist, that without genetics or better improvement in genetics, uh, the feeding was something that was important on the cost side, but we have to feed animals that have some genetic improvement. So uh, I went to many companies in the US to bring genetics to Chile, and then I decided to go to the UK, and uh, we came out with a daughter nucleus from PIC. The farm that stock us was Spring Green, Wisconsin, and uh, now I had it on the table nutrition, genetics, but not health. Health was a problem. But we were, yes, mm -hmm. we were food and mouse positive and hot cholera positive. Oh, wow. So being a virus or viruses that really was a, shall a challenge, we had to get rid of it. So on the on the, on the food and mouth disease, we were very lucky to have uh, Dr. Sanchez Vizcaino from Spain to come to Chile and uh, he got the principles of uh, getting food and mouth virus out of Chile. And now he's working with, you know, he was the man that uh, took out African swine fever from Spain many years back and now he's still working in Spain with us. Oh, cholera, you know, was another thing, and uh, he did the same, you know, for cholera, uh, was okay, and uh, we got rid of it, and now we have been for years free of those two viruses. So I learned from the side of the eradication that you can do it with the right principles of technology and discipline. Ending the disease problem we had first, the first time, and Steve Henry came in, great man, and helped us, and we eradicate the first. Afterwards, we got another first virus, and we have only today one farm with, with viruses, and that's all. Mm. So I'm very proud that we could work with the government, you know, to get the, the animals clean, okay? Mm -hmm. So now we have nutrition, genetics, people, and environment. Those are the things that we are looking for, okay? Right. Let me tell you another thing that is important. I think we've, we've, we've had uh, uh, open-minded in the sense that uh, once we started and everything was going okay, we invited many people from the U.S. to visit us, uh, and uh, nearly all the companies of the U.S. came to see us, many, many experts, nutritionists, veterinarians, and technology people, and help us a lot. So what do we did? We said, there's so many things we don't know, let's bring people who knows and help us. Right. So it was a tremendous opportunity, you know, to have so many people coming in and uh, learning from them, and uh, we are now a country with high production. Very nice. No, that's... Uh... That's always, I always got amazed uh, going back and, and uh, listening to this uh, story, you know. Uh, it's always helpful, like you said, um, to know the, you know, this history and, and, and uh, to understand the future. One question there, um, Gonzalo, if you can dive a little deeper on the history and evolution of swine reproduction 
and the exchange in knowledge between South America and North America over the last few decades? Well, yes. As I told you, you know, Bob Bravo started with, you know, very simple system. And then Martin Rio from Cubus in Spain came to see us. And he started showing us the way we could do AI. And the way we did it, you know, with uh, Spidex, we had a uh, 1,000 cells with uh, 50 boards. It was, the ratio was 20 to 1. It was a, it, it was a tremendous amount of boards. There were <laughs> all boards from the U.S., the IC. And uh, we learned there that it was better, you know, AI, and then the boards were less, and we have a stud, and, and things came well. So for many years, we go on with this system, you know. It was on the cervical insemination and not the ones we do today. So what do we learn? We learn that if we have the right, uh, the right system and we collaborate with education, how to do it, it's fantastic. The thing is, and this has come through the genetic side, genetics have changed tremendously the South system. The South is totally different from 40 years ago. Right. So also the artificial insemination and reproduction has changed tremendously. Now we, we instead of using three billion Firms, we use one and a half or less with intrauterine insemination. Now, why we were so anxious to come up with new things? Because we have relations. Relations with people who were doing it well, very good. And then we went there, we learned. People from Spain came in with the intrauterine insemination, and uh, there's no different from the the other one, and maybe today we have a single insemination, time single insemination. We don't do it here now, but it will. So in reproduction, everything goes to the issue of gill development, genetics, indexing the right genetics, so we can extract the value of the genetics, biosecurity of the semen coming in, and also, of course, in nutrition. Nutrition of the, of the new genes coming in is different. You remember March of 30, 20 years ago, the back fat and the weight were totally different. Today we have a tremendous differences in how we're feeding the sun. And uh, Kansas State has helped tremendously. You were there and many others. Billy Flowers from North Carolina and others, you know, from the U.S., has been a tremendous guide to go on following the genetic improvement, you know. On the guild side, you know, uh, George Fox and uh, Jennifer Patterson from, from Canada, University of Alberta, and many others, you see. So what are we doing? We're extracting the best information, put it to work with the best genetics, and come out today with a tremendous opportunity to arrive to production figures that are very, very good. What else in introduction? I think the best thing is look at the index, do the checking of boards and the guild, do the tremendous work of George Foxtrot, leader of origin, which is tremendous. So you can upgrade your guilds coming from your nuclear side. So, it's a bunch of things. It's not reproduction per se. It's just many things that have to be account, and many people they can help. Very good. Well, um, that makes sense. And one thing that I would like to ask you, Doctor Gonzalo, is that we talk a lot about pigs on this podcast, but a key element, of course, is people. And uh, so, if you had to hire someone. To work in a farm today, what characteristics would you be looking for? Okay, I think that's the number one issue today, worldwide. You know, people. 
Uh, first of all, you know, let me tell you that today we have side one with 15,000 sows, 12,000 sows, 10,000 sows, and family farms, you know. We have come to a tremendous growth in the numbers of sows pledged. So you imagine what kind of people would like to be working in a system which is so condensed. You have to start with that. People who are never been in a system so completely uh, uniform and block that he has to be a, an added value. He has to be a man that really wants to be there, you know, with, with tremendous gift. So, first of all, I would say everyone is welcome. Everyone. You have to be good enough to choose who is the man. There's no distinction of anything, anything. And once you talk to them and ask them where they come from, why they came, if they're excited about being part of the team, and tell them they are the basic of productivity. There's no way you're going to be producing without the right people. So. Today, if you go to a farm, there's different ages, uh, nationalities, everything. So the staff members inside the sites has to be enough compromise that the, everyone is equal, everyone has an opportunity, and everyone has a clear career, you know, to grow with the system. And the system is the company. And what are we doing with that is we are investing, you know, in whom in human value. I think that's that's it. that's the number one issue. Human values, okay, is what I think the number one issue. And if someone gets problems, you know, we have to go there and help. If someone doesn't look happy, what's going on, and teach them, teach them slowly and patient, the basics. Don't give him a manual this big, you know. Right. So remember the manual was very, very big. <laughs> Today when we need, we need a compromise of what we do daily. Okay, so who can come in and work? The door is open. Who has to select is the man that understands the human being. Okay? Mm -hmm. Very nice. Makes sense. Makes sense. Looking at the the um, characteristics there, and the uh, you know not only the the skills, the skills you can teach, right? You're looking more at the inherited um, behavior of of people. Absolutely. You know, there's a um, there's a uh, a good friend in in the U.S. Larry Coleman. Who is a DBM? Mm -hmm. Maybe you know him. Mm -hmm. Great guy. He's been, he been very, very on that side, you know. Um, what do we need? Uh, what we have to do with people, and so on. Larry, I know him very well. I'm triply motivated, but he's, you know, but he's thinking. So correct me, especially in stocking density gills before breeding. How are we going to show that? Why are we going to show it this way? It's because gills, you know, today are number one issue in the park. So we have to have a way to, do, to say things, not a piece of paper. We have to show them and help them to understand why we do those things. Very good. Well, the last question I have to you, Dr. Gonzalo, before we move to our three questions that we ask every guest every episode is... Um, you have seen pig production all over the world. What is one thing that the best farms do that the other farms could uh, emulate or copy? Look, I think to have a, a very good system, you know, you have to have a very good uh, staff member who understand a bit of, of the people, nutrition, yield, and everything. I think what we need today, and this is what I'm going to say, we need to improve our productivity by using data. Data is number one issue 
if you don't have data, it's going to be very difficult to set up a system to, let's say, we have a problem with reproduction. You know, if you don't have the data in front, it's going to be very difficult for someone to come in, you know, and try to get it right. Data is very important. And I think we have systems, you know, like Eichrestad and others, you know, that brings a lot of data and comparison of data. If you look at the U.S. now and others, 25% of the herds, uh, the average of the herds, are, are, they need to go forward and, and be part of the 10% herds, you know, move it. Right. We have to do it. How do we do it? By data analysis. Without data analysis, very difficult, really, to, to set up a priority system to get things done. I love it. That's great. The truth is, precision swine production is not the future, it's the present. Every Pig is the intelligent pig health platform. It is a simple yet powerful pig health and production management tool. Request a free 20 minutes demonstration at www.everypig.co. It is time to our famous three. All right, so uh, jumping to our three questions, Dr. Gonzalo, that we ask every guest. The first one is, what is your favorite swine book? Multi-site production system. Multi-site pig production. Very nice. The, the edition was 2000, year 2000. Year okay? 2000. Perfect. Very interesting. That was definitely a, a revolution, right? When, when people went from continuous flow to, to multi-site. Of course, and, and I think those things, you know, has a, a name. And the name is Tom Alexander Hank Harris. And I think Harris was working with PIT in those years. So, and now he's retired. But I think we have to to think, you know, that this kind of people, and there's hundreds of people in all over the world who have made tremendous contribution to the big industry. Agreed. Very good. What would be your favorite book unrelated to pigs? Okay. Tom Friedman, thank you for being late, it's called, was published in 19, 2016. He has two uh, fully surprised. Uh, he was two months ago back home here in Chile giving a talk, and he says, thank you for being late. What a name of the book. <laughs> And he said in the meeting, don't be late in uh, climate change. Mm. Don't be late on biotechnology or technology, okay? Mm -hmm. And don't be late, you know, in everything that we need to be focused in. It's a tremendous book to show us that climate change is going to change the world. And pigs, you know, and so he drinks 27 liters a day. Oof. Mm -hmm. And we have the panhandle in the U.S. is, is really short of, short of water. And we have to understand that we are part of a system, a biological system that we have to share between us and do things right. That's why uh, I think Thomas Friedman hmm, is calling us, don't be late. Mm -hmm. Don't be late, okay? Mm -hmm. Very nice. I like it. Um, the third question, Gonzalo, is what separates successful swine professionals from those that are not? Oh, God. Well, <laughs> I told you, you know, I got a PhD in nutrition, which is nothing in the sense that if you don't know much about what's going on in the world, you see? So, when I'm calling, and you have made a tremendous work in, in cancer and afterwards, you know, publishing on, on, on nutrition, you know, Thank we you. have to understand more, you know, that we have to do things right. Um, I started in, in North Carolina with crates 7 by 5 and now the crates are 8 by 6 you know, mm -hmm. the floor has to be right. Too many... Uh, fingers, you know, on the crates, you know, and they say, oh, colostrum is very important. But, you know, 
the poor little pig with less than two pounds, you know, cannot drink because it's full of uh, problems, you know, to drink. So what we have to do, we have to be more, more understanding. Not one thing, if you're a geneticist, okay, but go on and help us. Well, understanding that there's more than pure genetic. Your genetic has to be well taken care. If you're a PhD in nutrition, and you are, you know, we have a trouble this year because weather was wrong in, in the in the Midwest. Right. And they say that uh, the bushel of corn is going to be five dollars and more. So what I'm saying is what is the difference between people? One is a man that has one excellent knowledge, but also has an excellent knowledge that that knowledge has to be shared, participate, and teach. Okay? Mm -hmm. Very nice. I love it. Very good, Dr. Gonzalo. Those are uh, insightful uh, words there uh, throughout the podcast. Uh, as always, uh, I'm always learning. I'm always selfish. I want to learn myself, and I always love to to record that and share that with our audience. So, uh, thanks so much for our time, Dr. Gonzalo. Thank you very much.